So right now I'm going to show you 10 hidden features inside of the June 2020 release of Camera Roar. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and welcome to this week's tutorial. What we're going to look at right now is the 10 hidden features inside of Camera Raw. I've already done a few videos last week where we talked about Photoshop and what's new in there in Camera Raw and also what's new inside of the latest version of Lightroom. But this video is actually going to go into 10 features that you probably haven't noticed yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these three images from Bridge and I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose to open in Camera Raw. Why don't we start by grabbing something like a radial tool and I'm going to make a selection with the radial tool. Notice something here that happened. I didn't have to go back and reset all of these. Normally, whenever you go and grab one of these adjustment tools, it takes on the previous settings. So I'm constantly resetting it. So here's a nice thing. If we scroll to the very bottom under any of these tools, reset sliders automatically. So that means if I use the adjustment brush, notice as I paint, it's showing the mask. But let me turn this visible mask off. Notice it's not applying any changes. So I can go in here and I can do that myself. I can make these adjustments. So essentially what it does, if we choose that option, which is the bottom of the three, which is radial, gradient, and adjustment brush, notice that I can keep that on and these are going to reset every time. If I turn it off, then it will go back to the old behavior of remembering the last settings. If you look on the toolbar, notice this little dot appears next to the tools that have been used. So any adjustments that have applied to this image or any adjustments inside these panels will show. Watch what happens under our basic. Notice that there's nothing there, but watch the minute I move a slider, now that little white dot will appear. So this is a quick way to know where you've made edits to your images and where you haven't. Number three, and one of my favorites. So say we want to change the color of something like this and we want to select it. Let's grab our adjustment brush. And with our adjustment brush, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to turn off auto mask because if I use auto mask, it's hard to select. Let me show you the overlay. It's hard to select because of the different tones in there. So let me turn that off. And so generally speaking, this is what I do. I would go in there. I would mask this. Let's mask the bottom part. And then with auto mask, we can go and clean out these other areas. Clean this up now. I would just use the eraser. So I can just click on the eraser and paint down in these areas with auto mask turned on. Or rather than clicking the eraser, I can hold down the Alt or the Option key to toggle between them. Notice that brush is too big. So one of the things people generally do is let go and then they change the brush size, then hold Alt or Option, and it's still too big. So now we have to hold down the Alt or Option key and change the size of it because the sizes on those are separate. Now here's a feature. If you hit this little ellipses here, separate eraser size, turn that off. And now, if I hit the Alt or the Option key, notice there I am in the eraser, there I am in the brush, now they keep the same size. So if I resize one, hit the Alt or Option, brush, eraser, so now they keep the same size, super useful. And so I can do that now, hold the Alt or Option key, and just go down here, clean this up. So we're just going around those edges very quickly. Let's turn off the mask. And now we can go into the local hue slider and adjust the color. Now, tip number four. As I'm moving this, if I want to move it slower, well, we know I can hit the use fine adjustment, but if I hold down the alt or the option key, notice now it's moving super slow. So that goes into fine adjustments. If I release it, it moves fast again. If I tap it, it moves slow. So that tip allows us to go in and do fine adjustments very, very quickly and easily. And of course, if I want to clean this up, I just, I would just paint in here. And the nice thing about this brush too, is I can go up here into these 
reds and just paint them green. Next tip. When we're working in a bunch of panels, we have three different ways of viewing them. If I right click, I can go into multi-panel mode, which is where I am right now, which means that I can open as many panels as I want. And see how I can open as many panels as I want. I can have them all open. I have the option to choose single panel, whereas when I open one, it will close the other. I have the option to go into responsive panel mode, which will automatically close panels if it won't fit within the window. So notice how these will fit within the window. And then if I go down to another one, it's going to collapse another one so that they all fit within my viewing area. Now, if I'm in multi-panel mode and I want to change to single panel, hold down the control key and click. And now, as I'm holding down the control or the command key, it's going to temporarily go into single mode. Another interesting thing while we're talking about adjustments is if I close all these panels, you might have noticed there was a little eyeball there. This eyeball is telling us that we've made changes within that panel. I can go here. If I do some adjustments there, it's going to appear. So you can see that. If you want to temporarily hide the effects of that, just hold hold it down and as you do it will disappear release it will come back if you want to reset any of them option and you can see there's all the ones and we can click on any of those to reset those particular panels another one that's interesting is zooming so here we are if i hold on the zoom i can drag left to right it's kind of like this scrubby zoom inside of photoshop and of course to pan hold down the space bar and drag to pan around. Now we can change this behavior. If you don't like that behavior, click here on the preferences and under preferences, we have the option to use Lightroom style zoom and pan. Click OK. And now we click to zoom, click to zoom again. So the pan, of course, is going to be the same, the space bar to move around. But now we don't have that scrubby slider. If you want to have that scrubby zoom back on, just turn it back there, turn off Lightroom style, and now we get that scrubby zoom again where I'm just dragging it left to right to zoom in and out. All right, let's do something I think is kind of cool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to do an adjustment just so we can kind of see something. Why don't we go in and we're going to do a split toning. And why don't we give the split toning a little bit of effect here. I'm going to put a little saturation here. We'll put some yellows into the highlights in the shadows we'll put some blue in there awesome so we've got this kind of interesting effect and i'm just going to click on done and so we're done so why don't we right click and we're going to open another image in camera raw okay so we've opened another image and see these little ellipses give us other options so we could reset these to the camera settings or how it was when we opened it or choose previous conversion and now that will apply the settings that i did to the previous image all right, so how many of these tips did you guys know? Let me know in the comments underneath and also let me know what your favorite tip was. By the way, if you just got the new version of Lightroom and you wanna learn how to use it, I just released a course, a Lightroom Classic for Digital Photographers. It's fully updated for the latest version. A link underneath or on the card or somewhere there, check that out. So if you are new here, first of all, welcome to the crew. This is the Cafe Crew. And if you wanna join us, just hit that subscribe button right now. Turn on all those notifications so you know when I upload a new video, which it currently is three times a week. <laughs> and also, uh, we do live streams every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So anyway, guys, if you like this, select that like button and smash it into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.